Hey everyone, thanks for coming back to the BNS channel. My name is Edie Ann. I was thinking about something that I do every day that has changed my life. And I thought that it would be important to share that with you so that you can have that life changing, life altering uh, thing. And I, I'm going to tell you that so many people in this world are conditioned to the way that they wake up and the, the way that they run their day. They're almost on autopilot all the time. And I'd like to mention Mel Robbins and her five second rule. I just finished a training with her and she talks about the five steps of having a million dollar morning. And I, although I believe that a lot of her points are extremely valid, uh, I think she missed a very important piece, and I'm going to share that with you today. Um, I also want to share with you um, things or something that I do before bed. And I feel like when you attach these actions to your daily routine and have it become habit to the point where it's something that you automatically do every night and every morning you are going to see a shift in your life. You are going to see a shift in your business. You're gonna see a shift in your family, home, and personal life. So let me begin by sharing a scenario with you. Um, how many of you have woken up in the morning and very hastily put your alarm on snooze or had that gruff, I don't want to wake up, right, in the morning. One of the things that Mel Robbins speaks of as her first step uh, to having a million dollar morning is to not have your cell phone near your bed. I am going to agree with that. I have never done that. I've done it a couple times and I can promise you I did not get a good night's sleep. Leave your phone elsewhere. Do not have it near your bed. Do not have it as your alarm. Uh, she talks about putting your phone and the alarm in your bathroom or in a neighboring room, that's fine too. Um, but just remember that the temptations that a phone can bring to us as a, a lot of us are addicted to our phones, meaning that the social aspect of what's inside of that phone and what we can access is what we're addicted to, right? So if we eliminate the urge we won't be waking up, waking up and, and scrolling through our phones and causing our minds to go into uh, an instant place of stress potentially or just mindless thought and scrolling uh, which can fill our minds with garbage first thing in the morning. So I'm going to suggest that you don't have your phone set as your alarm, that you buy an old fashioned alarm clock and use that as your alarm. Uh, I will tell you that if you can get into this kind of a routine, there's going to be a point where you probably wake up before your alarm does. And that's because of your circadian rhythm inside of you that if you can set, will automatically wake you at the same time every day. So that's just something to keep in mind and becomes kind of a bonus uh, after you've done these things religiously every day. My suggestion to add to the fact that you don't, or, or let me go back to the scenario, right? So you wake up, you get all grumpy because you have to shut the alarm clock. You don't want to wake up. You don't want to go to work. You don't want to get out of bed. It's warm. It's been cold outside. You're snuggled in. Maybe you're with a pet. Maybe you're with your loved one who's still in bed with you. There are many reasons why we like to stay in bed, right? And what happens is that starts our day off in this rhythm of angst, not wanting to get up, not wanting to get out of bed, not wanting to go to work. And so we get up and all of a sudden this rhythm takes shape into our lives. Something spills on our outfit, uh, toothpaste drops on our shirt, uh, you stub your toe as you're getting out of bed, the traffic is very, very heavy and makes you late for work. Um, many things start to fall into that rhythm that you set and created the moment you woke up. See, the thing is, is there's a five second 
moment when you wake up in the morning that your brain is clear of anything that's going on in your real life, that it actually has a moment of blankness, a moment of clear thought, of unadulterated thought, that there is nothing in that thought between the moments that your brain switches from dream mode to live mode, right? It is really up to us to tap into that moment to set the temperature of the day, to set the rhythm of the day. Really, really important. So let me skip ahead and we're going to come back to the morning because I also believe that the evening, the nighttime is what sets the rhythm for our sleep and for dream mode. So we have the ability to somewhat control what our dreams are about. To somewhat control the mood of what our dreams are. So many of us go to bed with a TV show in our heads. The last thing that we exposed our mind to was TV. Some of you, it's a book. Some of you, it's the computer and scrolling through Facebook and reading everybody else's drama, right? Sometimes it's just recapping our day, but primarily we recap the bad things, the things we didn't complete, the things we didn't accomplish. You know, raise your hands if that's the truth, right? We go to bed and we're constantly, our mind is just going, replaying the things that happen. Sorry guys, I have an itch in my eye and I can't seem to get it. We go through this whole process of recapping everything that went wrong, that went, that got undone, that was not done, um, the, the fight that we had, the argument that we had, and we go to bed on that. You know, have you ever heard the term, don't go to bed angry when you're in a marriage, if you want it to be a successful marriage, don't go to bed angry, right? Because what happens is that stirs inside of you while you're sleeping, one, causing you not to sleep very well, two, potentially having some effect on your dreams. And our dreams as well affect our ability to sleep well and to get a good night's rest, right? So this is something that I want you to try, all right? So here are two steps, one at night and one in the morning, that I want you to try every night. You have got to be consistent. It has to happen every night. A habit needs to be formed. The conscious effort needs to be made in order for this to work. And I promise you that if you can allocate time for these two things, you are going to feel a shift in your life and your business. Before you go to bed, and Dana Wilde teaches this, it's called 10 minutes before bed. 10 minutes before bed, you grab a notebook and you write at least 10 things, right? See the, the commonality with 10? That you are grateful that happened that day. Write down 10 things that you are grateful for in that day. Things that happened, things that were said, things that you did, things that you didn't did maybe that you're grateful for. But you are to write down 10 things that you are happy about or thankful for or grateful for within that day. And then go straight to bed. So if you have a nightly routine as far as brushing your teeth, taking a shower, washing your face, that kind of thing, do that before. Because the last 10 minutes before you go to bed, you need to be writing your 10 grateful things that happened that day. Now, you can be like me and potentially forget to do that. And then you're in bed and you think, oh, crap, I forgot to do my 10 things that I'm grateful for. If that happens, and it may happen at the beginning because you're not used to it yet, you haven't created that habit, right? 
you can either get up and write the 10 things down or leave a notebook by your bed and write the 10 things there. If that's not accessible, then by all means, think through the process of those 10 things. My suggestion would just be to say them out loud. See, the purpose of you writing them is to etch them into your mind. When we add a physical motion, a physical thing to our thoughts and our emotion, then it is etched into our brains to a point where it will become part of what we sleep, right? And what we think about and, and the restful night's sleep. If you don't have the pen and paper, that's fine. But the physical action of speaking it will also help to etch it in your brain. But I would suggest that you write it down because it is the most powerful. Okay? So 10 minutes before bed, you write 10 things that you're grateful for that day. Not for tomorrow, not the day before, that day. All right? And then go to sleep. When you wake up in the morning, that alarm goes off, your eyes open. Within that first five seconds, and this is a major conscious effort, and it may be something that you want to add as number 11 on your 10 minutes before bedtime to say something like, I can't wait to wake up and be grateful. So here's what happens in the morning. So in the morning, in that first five seconds, the thoughts and the things that are going to come out of your mouth are at least two, if not three things that you are grateful for that are happening that day. Now, if you are working towards something or you are aiming towards a result, you need to speak that gratefulness as if it's happened that day. For instance, when I used to wait, when I, before I hit Superstar Director, every morning I would wake up and say, thank you so much for making me a Superstar Director. Thank you so much for all the people that are joining my team. Thank you so much for all of the orders that I'm getting. Those were my three. So it wasn't that it necessarily had was happening, but I had put it and processed it through my head that it was already in the works, that it was happening currently. I made my grateful statements current. The ones that I did the night before were past. What happened in that day? The morning is what's going to happen. And speak it in a sense as though it's already happened. Okay? Those are pretty vital. And, and to some of you, you might be thinking, oh, okay, Edie, but I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge you to try it, and I'm going to challenge you to come back and tell me how it worked. I'm going to challenge you to come and say, Edie, wow, what a difference. I feel better. I'm more productive. I'm doing better things in my life and in my business. 21 days it takes to form a habit. In the morning, in the first five seconds, the moment you open your eyes and you have that free time where there's nothing that's clouded it, state at least three things. I wouldn't, I mean, it doesn't really matter if you go more, but at least three things, two to three things that you are grateful for that are happening that day. And whether you know that they are happening or not, state them in a sense of current, that they are currently happening as though they are happening now. And then 10 minutes before bedtime, write 10 things down that you are grateful that happened that day. And watch your life turn around. Watch the magic happen. Watch, and you know it's funny guys, I'm gonna share a personal thing with you. Yes, for four years, three years, my mantra in the morning was thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for making me a superstar director, for my orders, blah, blah, blah. When I reached it last October, I lost my mantras, right? I needed to make new ones. You know, I am grateful that I've reached those things and that those things are happening, but now I need to fill, you know, some of the ones that I need to happen now, like my health. Thank you for making me healthy. So those are gonna change. As things progress in your life and change in your life, those 
grateful statements in the morning are going to change. And, and more than likely, the 10 statements of gratefulness at night are going to change as well. Every day. So, show some gratitude to yourself and to your world, right? By doing your three grateful statements in the morning and 10 grateful statements at night. All right? Come back and share your successes and your thoughts, and I will see you on the next video. Bye.